Okay, good morning everyone and uh, welcome back to the class on uh, children's ministry. I hope you had a good learning in the first two hours. I think it was Pastor Deepika's class, right? It was a good learning, superb. <laughs> superb and blessed, okay. So what did you learn on? Prede predestination. In the book of Ephesians. Oh. So now predestination is uh, very clear, good clarity. Okay. Yes. Sorry? Kairos time. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah, Pastipika is an excellent teacher and uh, um, does a lot of research and hard work in studying and uh, preparing for our class. So good, good learning experience. Okay. Uh, we'll continue with um, uh, children's ministry learning about the developmental needs of children in various age groups. Um, so let's uh, begin with a word of prayer. So can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Harrison, can you lead us in prayer, please? All right, good morning. Good morning, thank you, Harrison. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. I want to bless your name. I want to give you all the glory. I want to give you all the honor. I want to give you all the adoration because you are the great God. Thank you for the opportunity you've given unto us to be here today. And thank you for another learning experience and thank you for another opportunity to receive your word this morning. And we commit everyone unto your hands. And we ask, Father, that the words we hear shall not be words of men, but words from the throne of grace. Give us the grace to listen, give us the grace to learn, and give us the grace to abide by it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Harrison. Uh, Sidan, can you please open those windows? Uh, yeah, please open the windows. That one we can... Okay, so uh, on Monday we were looking at the we've we've come to reach the developmental needs of children uh, ages eleven to twelve, and we looked at uh, you know that children in this uh, age group, um, you know, uh, one minute, yeah, encourage them uh, group projects, you know, uh, missions work. Uh, uh, one minute, sorry. Uh, Sidan, can you open that uh, glass window so that we can get some air? You have to open the glass window, yes. No, it's not open. So... Okay, sorry. okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, uh, encourage you, uh, children in this uh, age group, uh, you know, uh, take them for uh, various uh, mission trips, like evangelistic trips you know, to uh, minister to the elderly, the sick in hospital, uh, those who are poor, often children, um, those who are physically challenged children, you know, just to um, get them to minister to them, to see their world, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, just to uh, get them to also, you know, look at, uh, be thankful at uh, for what God has um, blessed them with, um, you know, also because, um, uh, and also it'll give them a good exposure uh, to learn about their own strengths and the areas of their gifting, you know, because uh, one of the goals of this age, we said, was they uh, like to learn more about their strengths and giftings. Um, they're also learning to accept that all people are different, accepting people's differences. So this will just help them basic, you know, um, uh, to look at, um, you know, the challenges, the difficulties that people face, uh, to see how blessed they are, to be thankful for that and how they can help them out. And also, you know, uh, ways and means to look at their own uh, giftings, their own calling in the body of Christ, um, in, the, in the family of uh, Christ. Okay, also it's good to get these children to work with younger children, uh, just basically mentoring them or encouraging them, uh, maybe even supervise them you know uh, when playing games or having act, doing some uh, basic activities okay um, teach them to practice serving others 
uh, also get them to pray together uh, as a team, as a group, as a class, or also individually, you know, um, they can um, lead in prayer, lead out in prayer, just gives them confidence how to pray and, uh, you know, gets them into uh, the whole, um, uh, you know, practice of praying, what they, how to pray, get them better in that, okay. Uh, it's a good time to also get them to memorize uh, uh, Bible passages. If you look, uh, some of these character traits or, uh, you know, developmental needs are very similar to the other previous age groups, but, you know, basically we need to move them uh, from just learning uh, small uh, verses, uh, one or two verses, to uh, memorizing uh, passages, uh, to uh, just not just memorizing Psalm 23, even Psalm 121, you know, uh, memorizing Psalm 119. I've heard uh, some kids narrate the whole of Psalm 119, all of those verses, word perfect, okay? And these are children. So, you know, basically getting them to memorize the sun, having various Bible quizzes and activities, um, uh, which will get them to uh, memorize uh, large portions of scripture uh, so that it's just so ingrained in their system, in the very fiber of their whole being, uh, so that these words uh, will come back, you know, uh, to memory uh, as they are praying. God can use these scripture passages to help them, uh, uh, to give them words of promise, encourage, hope, uh, whatever situations they're going through, okay? Uh, children at this age group basically... Um, uh, encourage them to, you know, treat others kindly, uh, because, uh, like we said, you know, they have they one of their goals uh, in this age group is they're trying to resolve conflicts. Uh, they have a lot of conflicts with uh, their peers, their friends, their classmates, with other children, uh, with their own siblings. They're trying to handle their own uh, emotions because these are basically uh, pre-adolescent or pre-teens. They're getting to uh, teenage years, to adolescent age, uh, uh, to adolescent years. Uh, they're uh, almost stepping into puberty, some of them also. So also they're trying to accept their uh, differences and, you know, accept that, uh, you know, others are different. Uh, so it's good to encourage them to treat others kindly, both in class uh, and outside class, how they speak about uh, people, how they address people, a good time to teach them some good uh, values, uh, you know, and uh, uh, discuss with them, you know, uh, about uh, Corinthians chapter 13, uh, you know, uh, the whole passage on what love is, love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, does not boast, it's not self-seeking, it's not proud, it's not rude, it does not keep a record of wrongs. So, you know, all of those things you can, uh, all of those attributes, you can talk about what each of them are. You can talk about parables on love. You can talk about Bible passages on love, how Jesus commanded us to love one another. And also, you know, discuss with them, uh, give them various case histories, scenarios, about uh, situations, what can be done, what should a people have done in those situations, um, you know, how they can um, uh, practice what they are uh, learning. Because these children, they like to get information, write reports, uh, you know, uh, uh, so you can get them to get into groups, discuss, you know, give them scenarios or life stories of various people. How did this person respond? How should that person have responded, you know, uh, which will Get, the, get them to think, analyze, because they're basically in this age group also learning to, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, understand more of abstract ideas and concepts and, you know, how they can put that into um, practice, okay? So how to practice treating others with love, um, uh, you know, discuss ways they can resolve conflicts in a peaceful and mature way. So you can use narratives uh, in the Bible that talks about uh, that as well. And basically talking about uh, speaking the truth in love. Ephesians talks uh, where Paul says, you know, speak the truth in um, love. Okay, what does it mean to speak the truth in love? How they can speak the truth, but how they can speak it in um, love. Also, you know, they are, uh, because they're, uh, nearing puberty, uh, preteens, they have a lot of, um, you know, emotions that are uh, swaying up and down, you know, so a lot of frustration, uh, they don't know how to express their anger, their frustration, so you can uh, help them uh, 
you know, how to uh, express their emotions, their anger, their frustrations with calm words uh, while seeking a resolution. Yes, uh, Christopher, you have your hand up. Yes, Christopher. Uh, you can unmute your mic and speak. Uh, you have your hand up. Okay. Uh, so we look at, you know, how to help them, you know, uh, uh, express their frustration, anger in calm words. You basically, you can, you know, like an example is given that, you know, when such and such thing happens, you know, um, and you do this, 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 how do you feel? Uh, basically, you know, it's good at this age group to give them various uh, uh, scenarios, uh, you know, stories, uh, help them to analyze because if you just tell them, hey, this is what you should be doing, this is not what you should be saying, this is not how you should be reacting, uh, they are not going to take it from you, but, uh, you know, always uh, real life examples, um, you know, and also case uh, stories, case histories, case studies, uh, some things which you can even, you know, think out of the box, you know, just plan your own case study, just present it, get them to discuss, have, uh, you know, uh, discussions or, uh, you know, a debate on it uh, will help children uh, in this age group. Encourage spiritual disciplines of praying, uh, giving, offering, and also reading there. Uh, Bible. Yes, Christopher, you're back. Are you back now? Is he back in class? Oh, sorry, Pastor. I was having some internet problem, uh, no problems. No worries. Problems. And sometimes your voice was just, uh, you, I was using connection. So I wasn't sure if it was only my problem or it was the class's problem. So I think it's only my problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, so encourage them uh, in spiritual disciplines like praying, uh, giving offerings, you know, reading their Bible, very important to inculcate this uh, in, in their lives. At uh, this age, uh, in grade, uh, you know, age 11 and 12, they're able to understand more abstract ideas, um, like you can explain to them about Trinity, you know, what, um, you know, how sin was atoned for, how sin was paid for, uh, what Jesus did, uh, you know, to atone for our sins. We can talk about the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, we can also talk about um, uh, prophecies, you know, which foretells uh, uh, Jesus' birth, the person of, uh, and the work of Jesus Christ, and also about uh, the, you know, the second coming of Jesus, the end days. So, all of these something which you can talk to them, not in, you know, uh, uh, to a level where uh, you, you teach or uh, minister to an adult, but to a level which they can understand, basically get them to, uh, you know, give them a basic feel or an understanding about that the world, uh, that uh, the Bible, you know, uh, is truth because uh, it, ha it foretells prophecies, it foretells things that are happening, and we see that happening even uh, today we will see that happening in the future so these are the things that you can keep a lookout for so you know uh, the whole idea of um, the bible being the truth being the word of god uh, inherent scripture uh, you know infallible scripture is uh, is something that is in their minds and they know that they can go back to scripture because it is the truth it's god's word uh, it talks about um, things that have been fulfilled and all of those things so you can uh, teach them about that. You can also talk about the old and the new covenant, you know, the difference that is there, uh, and we being part of the new covenant, how privileged, how blessed we are, a uh, good age for them to uh, learn all of these uh, things. A good age to also provide them uh, with a basic overview of the entire Bible, uh, you know, uh, talking about how, you know, Bible is uh, historic. We can prove things in history that has happened uh, with all the narratives uh, in the Bible uh, and how all of that ties up together, the prophecies that were revealed, you know, how we see that in the birth of Jesus, in, the, uh, in his work here on earth, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, uh, the coming of the church and all of those things. Uh, 
also get them to uh, you know uh, talk to them about what the bible says about uh, you know about who jesus is the beginning to the end that is trinity father son and the holy spirit how they are revealed in the Old Testament, revealed in the New Testament, will be a very exciting and interesting study uh, for them. Also, can teach them about um, uh, how they can learn about the different uh, uh, books in the Bible, you know, um, and who wrote the different parts of the Bible. Why did they write those? Uh, so, and, uh, like we said in the in the previous age group, we get them to learn all the books of the Bible. So we are assuming at this age that they know the different books of the Bible, where it is, and uh, also you know get them to study each book if you want to uh, briefly, like you are you study the books in the Old Testament, uh, Old Testament survey, New Testament survey. Also get them to. Uh, understand who wrote the different parts of the Bible, why did they write it, to see things in context, uh, cultural setting, historical setting, all that you're learning now can also be briefly uh, taught to them because they are in an age where they are able to learn, uh, receive, uh, you know, and uh, be guided as uh, well. Okay. Um, also, uh, you know, use the Bible to help provide them with the specific answers to question, you know, who is Jesus, uh, whether he's God, whether he's man, or he's only man, who's fully God, fully man, why did Jesus come, uh, or, you know, why does uh, God love me, how does the Trinity uh, work, uh, why were all these prophecies given, uh, why even scripture, you know, and what am I supposed to do with life, because they are kind of growing into adulthood in in a couple of years so they're trying to navigate through life they need guidance they need help uh, need to know which subjects they're strong in what is the future hold for them you know uh, what they're good at so uh, basically get them to uh, navigate them through life uh, show them from the bible how god guides and leads through various uh, biblical uh, examples okay the spiritual message um Okay, the spiritual messages that they need to hear is uh, the salvation message, uh, that they can accept Jesus Christ as their um, uh, personal uh, savior. And then also, you know, all of the other points that, um, you know, I am going to present on the screen is something that I already uh, mentioned to you when we looked at, uh, uh, you know, the previous age group, which is the eight and 10 year old. So I'm not going to be looking at each one of them in detail. I'm just going to be uh, putting it up on the slides so you can just uh, quickly uh, read that because it's something that we already um, went through for ages eight to uh, 10. So not it's just repetitive. It's the same thing for uh, this age group as well. So you can just read that up. Okay. So, any questions uh, regarding this age group, eleven and twelve years old, before we move on? Okay. Kung says, would they understand if we say that God is self-existent? Some children ask, who is God's father and mother, and how did God come into existence, and all that? Yes, uh, it's a good question. Yes, they do ask. They want to know. Uh, who God is, where did he come from? Uh, it's good to say that God is self-existent. He has no beginning. He has no end. He's self-sufficient. Uh, yes, it's a good uh, age to for them to, because they are now able to understand more abstract concepts, they'll be able to understand this as well. Uh, basically, mentally uh, or intellectually, uh, you know, uh, uh, the preteens in this age age of uh, 11 and 12, you know, uh, mentally they are very curious. They ask a lot of questions. Uh, they love to reason and discuss. 
So if you, you just can't tell them this is this and you have to do this, they'll ask you why. Why should we do this? Why did this happen? Uh, why did God have to become a man? Why, why did he have to do, you know, why was atonement for sin in such a cruel way or Jesus dying on the cross? You know, um, uh, why, is the, why there has to be a new covenant and not, why is the old covenant uh, no longer operative or rendered ineffective? So all of these questions is something that they will ask because they like to reason uh, they like to discuss so when you're teaching them you know it can be as a good time of uh, discussion time uh, to gather information of what they think what they understand and then presenting the truth and when you present the truth even discuss with them reason uh, with them uh, they begin to develop uh, having longer attention span so you can use uh, time more in, in teaching time uh, they they can memorize things so get them to memorize a lot of scripture uh, they're developing self-confidence they can think abstractly um, they have a more mature sense of time and space and that is why they're able to understand things uh, chronolog chronologically that happens in history because they're learning a lot of uh, you know uh, history in school uh, so they have a mature sense of understanding of time time periods as well, um, you know, and, uh, you know, so then you can uh, talk to them about biblical uh, history, Bible history and things like that. They're also beginning to be aware that, you know, adults are not always right. Like the other age groups who take you just by face, they take you literally by what you say. Remember, we said that from age three to right up to uh, ages seven, you know, they, in age eight, they literally take whatever you have to say. But in this age group, you know, they begin to say, hey, not all what adults do and say is uh, right they will begin to question that uh, like for example if uh, you tell them something then you say you know i saw you tell they can tell their parents or the elders i saw you doing this you know i saw you answering like this i saw you going there and why can't i do it i saw you watching this you know so our lives that we live should uh, you know hold a lot of uh, 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 you know uh, the way we live our lives conduct our lives uh, should be so right that you know they're able to see the right and then uh, just you know learn even before we teach them okay uh, they also want to make their own decisions um, so, you know, uh, they'll question your authority, not like the younger age groups that they would just, you know, whatever you tell them, they'll just believe it, they'll just do it. Uh, why they are doing it? Because my teacher told me to do it, the smaller, younger ones, the age groups. But these preteens, teens, uh, you know, they like to make their own decisions. They're looking for freedom and independence. Um, so, you know, um, you'll have to tell them why we're asking them to do it give them a logical reasoning and understanding and they'll be then because they're beginning to reason uh, more okay uh, physically they're growing steadily um, they enjoy being active this is like the you know this age group is super high on active on energy levels and very active but once they come to teenage you know they you see them more reserved very quiet sitting very quietly uh, if you ask them any questions they'll just nod their head like this sometimes you don't know whether they're saying yes or no sometimes they'll just say this sometimes they'll say ha huh, yes no okay fine you know they'll just give you that one word answers but children in this age group um, they like to talk they're more active uh, they speak they like to do a lot of things you know um, and they want to participate rather than just listening and watching so you need to uh, you know participation means because um, you know uh, get them to enact but also a lot of discussions can help uh, debates can help you know, uh, trying to prove things uh, will be very engaging and uh, meaningful and exciting for them. Uh, they have, uh, you know, children at this age mature at different rates. So you can see some child who's very puny and small and some children growing at a very fast rate, but don't, uh, you know, comment on their uh, growth, their uh, looks, the way they are, the son, because they're very, very getting very conscious of who they are. Also, they're maturing at different rates in their in their ways of thinking, understanding. Some can be very mature, 
very adult like some can be very immature child like still you know so you can't tell them hey you're behaving like a child look at him learn to be like him you know he's he's so grown up he's so mature you know because they are growing at different levels we need to just respect them for where they are and if they're really childish we need to really help them if they're really behaving too big for their shoes we need to really bring them to you know to that their level so that they're enjoying that basic age group and that is a challenge nowadays for uh, many children because you know many children are living you know because of this whole pandemic they've been with their parents they've suddenly grown up indoors and they're trying to be, behave like adults and their parents are saying you know they are just behaving like adults they don't want to go to children's church they want to be in in adult church uh, they're thinking that you know what they're watching what they're wearing is too childlike they don't want to do it they think this activity is kiddish and childish when they're just in grade six and seven see so we need to not give them their own way and getting them to grow very fast into adulthood which can kind of you know uh, get them not to enjoy their childhood as well get them to enjoy the childhood make them know that hey you're still this age children in this age still do these things it's okay for you to do it you know at the same time also teach them level of maturity in the areas that they have to mature in others if they grow too fast you know you miss out on their uh, growing childhood years yes say you have a question yeah, yes, I, I'm, I'm happy, happy you brought up this point. I just wanted to also make an observation that I've realized that uh, even while growing up, I noticed it. It's like those who are teenagers and very matured, later on in their adulthood, they end up doing the things that we were doing as teenagers that we're supposed to have already outgrown. So that point is very important, very, very important. I think there has to be a balance most times teenagers are caged into a performance kind of um, attitude or behavior to look like they're very, very mature. But what we're doing invariably is killing their time when they should actually, you know, be just young people, you know, not in a bad way, but just basically things that they should have just done at that period. So yes, that, that's a very important part. I just wanted to buttress what you said. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Say. Yeah, uh, the, the challenge also, uh, you know, these are preteens, but challenge also for teenagers or preteens, uh, basically for challenges for the teenagers is their parents, they're confused because sometimes they, uh, they, the elders, their parents are saying, hey, you're, you're in grade eight, grade nine or grade 10, you know, behave like a grown up. But when they behave like a grown up, you're saying, hey, you know, don't act too big for your shoes, you're still a child we a parents we still need to tell you so they're confused hey you know uh, when do we behave like a child when do we become behave like an adult so i think parents should have that own clarity teachers uh, themselves should have a clarity you know uh, in how in letting them be sometimes just as kids uh, some just understanding their age uh, and in, in in specific areas where they need to act uh, in a mature way, you know, teach them others, they can also uh, get confused and, uh, you know, that can kind of come out uh, the, the resulting action or uh, the attitude or uh, their behavior can be seen as very arrogant uh, as, and as very uh, rebellious because many of teenagers are... Uh, you know labeled as uh, arrogant and rebellious just because they are confused and we confuse them even uh, more okay uh, so they are annoyed these children uh, you know uh, ages uh, uh, 11 and uh, 12 are very very uh, noisy they love to talk uh, talk loud laugh have fun um, you know so we need to um, you know be aware of that they love to compete with each other as well there's a lot of competition that happens in studies in the looks uh, in the way they do things in their talents that also at this age becoming aware of the opposite sex so it's the boys becoming aware of the girls the girls aware of the boys the girls don't like to sit with the boys the boys won't like to sit with the girls so we just have to you know even if they like to do activities some of them would like to uh, mix up with the boys and girls but sometimes the girls would not like to mix with the boys just uh, you know uh, 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 you know just uh, accommodate that uh, help them out and uh, see what best you can do to help them in that area it's 
spiritually, they're asking a lot of questions about Christianity. Uh, they're learning to evaluate different points of view. Uh, they also enjoy uh, worshiping God. Um, they're also learning how they can apply the Christian truths in their own moral behavior. So good to get them to... Um, you know, um, uh, you know how they can practice what they are learning, and you know, especially it comes to moral behavior. Uh, they like to share and participate in uh, church activities, so get them involved in a lot of activities, evangelism, in adult church, ministering, and stuff like that. Um, they can express their spiritual thoughts both orally and written, so you can engage them, get them to. Uh, do it okay socially they're learning better ways to make and keep friends um, you know uh, even though they have a lot of conflicts they're trying to resolve conflicts they like to keep friends uh, so you help them out they're interested in a lot of uh, cultures around the world um, you know so you could uh, you know um, get them to see the bible culture the culture in those times how they can interpret in the present time also, they have strong feelings about right and wrong, so you can build them up on that. Uh, they also have a need to belong to a specific peer group, a specific group of friends. So here we see them making their own cliques. They like to do things in their own cliques, their own friends, sit with their own friends. Um, you can let them to do that, but also get them to relate uh, with others. Um, they're learning how to relate with boys and girls. Uh, they're learning to be more responsible and dependable so you can give them you know bible passages to read ask them in the you know the next sunday whether they read what they learned about prayer uh, you know how they practice what they learned uh, and all of those things okay now to teach uh, 11 and 12 years old effectively uh, you know what are some of the things that we can do just provide them uh, challenging activities which can challenge their thinking their mindset uh, uh, you know, you know, even their energy levels, um, give them time to think, reason and solve their problems. Just don't preach down on them, teach down on them, sit with them, discuss, go through things. Um, you know, give them uh, uh, writing and reading activities because they're good at now picking up on their reading and writing. So get them to write their thoughts, write down how they're going to uh, apply things. Uh, provide an atmosphere of acceptance and trust. Very, very important because they're looking for acceptance and trust. There's a lot of uh, uh, growing that is happening, a lot of changes, hormonal changes. They're beginning to look different, act different. Uh, so they're beginning to accept and love themselves. So very important for you to, you know, create that environment of acceptance and trust. Uh, you know, give them a variety of creative activities, uh, give them time for games for puzzles for discussion time you know don't compare and compete between boys and girls we're just learning for them to learn together accept each other so don't have comparisons between boys and girls don't say hey the boys uh, are not learning their uh, scripture passages or their memory verse the girls are better you know uh, don't do that just encourage them uh, you know and don't uh, even have uh, competitions based on girls and boys, um, you know, um, also encourage them to read the Bible and apply to their behavior, um, you know, how it can help them, uh, you know, in their moral uh, thinking, moral behavior, help them to understand the plan of salvation, uh, and also how they can express their own faith in Jesus Christ, how they can speak to their children in school, share about Jesus, uh, little things that they can do, uh, how they can share Jesus with the, you know, elderly people when you take them to elderly homes or to children in orphanages or those who are sick in the hospital. Uh, they like to make applications for the here and now. So whatever situation they are going through, you know, or the challenges they are facing in this age group, you need to get them to apply it for their own specific age groups. Don't talk about, you know, the future or when they become adults. Okay, plan something very creative uh, or active for each lesson uh, and make worship a natural part of uh, your worship and prayer, a natural part of your time together. And also get them to understand that God is real, eternal, and supremely powerful. So even though you can't see him, uh, there is uh, no beginning, there's no end to him. You know, talk about uh, who he is, that he is sovereign, his eternal, the attributes of God. 
that he is uh, all powerful okay um uh, the children in this age group basically know that god cares for them and acts on their behalf uh, but you need to help them to get that into practice get that into their you know being a very part of them uh, so you can encourage them to call on god to pray uh, when they're going to struggle in school whether it's their studies their teachers their friends uh, or with people making fun of the way they look or uh, you know um, you know uh, are they trying to take part in a competition you know they they're losing uh, they're not able to handle their emotions basically you know how they can uh, uh, you know uh, call on god in their struggles even in the football field even in the field when they're playing games or you know having their lunch whatever or when they're in the mall anywhere okay so just get them to uh, in a place where uh, they're not looking for their friends to help them in their struggles they're not running to parents or teachers but they're calling on the name of god okay and calling on his help and also uh, you know be worthy of their respect and admiration very important uh, because once you win their respect and admiration they will come to you with their challenges and struggles remember they are now preteens they will have a lot of physical uh, challenges that they're going through hormonal they're not able to understand their mood swings they're not able to understand why they are feeling like this thinking like this behaving like this so if you give them a place where they feel loved and accepted and you gain their respect and admiration you know they will basically uh, uh, come to you and uh, you know they would uh, uh, they will confide in you share with you and you can um, help them okay uh, what to expect from children in this age group they basically the girls develop faster than the boys um, uh, the boys at this age are very very competitive so if they get competitive you you know why you can channelize their competitiveness in the right way uh, you know in this phase they begin to have best friends uh, with whom they share their activities um, you know uh, and at the same time you know their, their gifts their talents they look for people who have the same mindset if suppose you know they also tend to move from their friend groups they had in the in the you know in the earlier stages of their life now they're looking for people with their the same thinking their same likes their dislikes so if if there's a group of people who like movies uh, they join them and then if they are very studious in their studies uh, you know and there this is this group that is uh, very focused on studies and research and all of this they will move to that friend group if there's uh, they like fashion and dressing and you know uh, makeup and uh, all of those things if they will move to a group that talks about that or if there's a group that is very active in games and all and you are somebody who loves games you will join that group so they're basically looking for uh, groups which kind of identify with their likes dislikes and their own um, you know tastes and uh, uh, uh talents okay uh, but even as they're looking for best friends their relationships will get more complicated competitive and changeable they will be changing their friend circles uh, and it can be very very disturbing to some you know basically the many of them in this age group will come to you saying you know she was my friend or he was my uh, basically it's more for the girls not for the boys you know uh, she was my friend you know from grade one till grade uh, five and now she's behaving different she doesn't want to talk to me she's always with that group then you need to make the child understand why this her friend is moving on to someone because her tastes and likes are what is discussed in that group rather than you because it's not something bad with you you don't have the same tastes and likes that she has they're no more longer talking about barbies and little toys and and playing around they're more talking about more you know uh, big stuff you know uh, preteen stuff so you know they're looking for people who kind of understand what they are saying and their um, like so you need to help them out because their uh, friendship circles are becoming more complicated uh, competitive is also because there's a lot of competition among friends hey how much do you get how much did you get you know uh, uh, how did you win why didn't i win you know and all of those things so uh, you know it's, and it's particularly true only of girls i don't know about boys uh, boys can the men can talk and share something about their preteen age am i right in what i'm saying 
<laughs> the guys are just laughing, smiling. Okay. Um, they're more affected by uh, the lifestyle of this world, you know, um, uh, the, what the world dictates to them. So their thinking, standards, lifestyle, always start changing the way they dress, the way they speak, the way they stand, the way they move, uh, all of that. Even their food, what they're watching and everything, you know, will all begin to change because they're also learning to start to be independent. They're beginning to be independent on their own. Uh, so they're making their own um, style statements, uh, you know, and other things as uh, well. Uh, they develop a capacity to reason and work things out. Uh, so sometimes when you tell them, you know, they can buy you into doing their own ways in a very cheeky way, smart talk, you know, they can get you to do what they want to do because they have this whole capacity of reasoning and saying, why can't I do it? When he is doing it, she is doing it, everybody is doing it, why can't I do it? Uh, so sometimes it can be interesting and funny, but sometimes it can get into a heated uh, debate and argument. Uh, so you also, as um, somebody who is teaching them, you know, ministering to them, also need to be very smart in how you can get smart with them and uh, they will understand your smartness and the way you're getting around uh, with them, okay? Um, they make efforts to be independent, uh, so they're changing their relationships uh, also with their parents. Uh, their relationship is getting a little more uh, tougher and difficult. Uh, the scene at home is uh, like the Cartoon Network, Tom and Jerry, right? Uh, you know, uh, somebody, one does something to irritate the other one, the other one is reacting and saying, hey, because you didn't listen to me, no TV. You can't go out with your friends. You can't go out to play. You won't get this. So uh, the child is saying, because you did not give me this, I am not going to study. I'm just having my book in front. I'm going to fail this test. So we know you have children like that. So we need to get around them uh, to know how uh, they're learning to be independent, but how to lay down those rules and boundaries in a way that basically uh, helps them out. They're able to see, discuss with them, get them to make the rules, uh, you know, and uh, keep those uh, rules. Okay. Um, what can you do to help them be conscious of the fact that they are going through physical changes? They're becoming very conscious. Uh, they're very shy, slowly beginning to be shy, even though they are very active and they like to do things. So don't avoid avoid comparing their physical growth with other children. Um, allow them a certain level of independence, but discuss with them. Okay, I'll allow you to do it, but why are you doing this? Uh, you know, if you do this, what do you think is the outcome or the consequences? Get them to see it. Then, you know, if they you, you know that this is not the right thing, they will come around and say, yeah, I think, you know, it's not going to work out. Then I'll go with what you say. Okay. Uh, hear and understand their point of view. Uh, don't keep on preaching to them, telling them what they have to do, what should be done. Uh, get them to understand, uh, get them to make rules because eventually they're going to make the right rules, right? Uh, they can very sometimes very cheekily or smartly make some funny uh, rules which will work on their behalf. But you can say, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, you can do that. But if you do that, this is going to be the consequences of it. And then, you know, you're just going to have a good laugh at it. And, uh, but, you know, it'll just help them to see your point of view. Uh, get that point of view so that you know that you are not just somebody they're coming to in children's church or Sunday school where you're just preaching on them, telling them what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing. But you're also taking time to listen to them. You care about their opinions. You're not overriding their opinions. You're going with what they want. Uh, but at the same time, you can get around doing what you want also. Okay, so somewhere there's a give and uh, take. Okay. Uh, continue to have, because these children are going to be independent, but don't remove those boundaries, have boundaries, safe limits, um, you know, um, take an interest in that so that they know where you are going and what you're doing with them so that they also have a sense of direction and they know that rules is just there basically to uh, help them, okay? Okay, so that is basically ages... Um, uh, 11 and 12, anyone has any questions? No questions?
just looking for um, okay No questions? Okay, just give me a minute, please. Um, Okay, if there are no questions, then uh, we'll move on to uh, ages 13 to 18, which is our last section, okay? Let me just present this. Um, Okay, uh, now we talk about uh, teenagers, uh, ages um, 13 um, to 18, okay? Okay, these are early uh, adolescent uh, years and this is a time of uh, rapid change, uh, you know, they're growing uh, physically, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, changes that are happening physically, emotionally, spiritually, um, uh, mentally, intellectually. Uh, so all areas of life, there is a lot of change, and uh, you know it's uh, get transitioning from being children to adulthood. So we we all have been through that uh, transition stage. It was uh, for some of us, it was an, a good time, an enjoyable time. Uh, for most of us, it was a time of struggle. Uh, great uh, struggle for each one of us but uh, you know it's a good learning experience um, for uh, children as well so a good age group to work with though it can be very challenging it's a good age group to uh, work with uh, what to expect from this age group um, you know they will basically begin to shift from uh, you know uh, following authoritative figures to understanding to making their own rules uh, you know uh, being very independent being what they think they feel they like uh, rather than what uh, uh, their teachers opinion is school opinion is uh, their parents opinion because they basically come into a, a place where they're beginning to think hey you know uh, school teachers adults they're not perfect because they're not perfect, you know, they also do things that are wrong, then why should they be dictating my life or telling me what to do? You know, uh, I'm growing up, I like my own likes and dislikes, the ways I like to do things, you know, I'm no longer going to be doing what uh, the way they want me to um, do. Okay, so there's this whole shift that is uh, happening. Uh, they will also transition from living independent, uh, uh, they will transition into living independently out in the world. They like to be independent, do things on their own. They don't like people, uh, you know, being like a policeman or a policewoman behind them, you know, always guiding them, telling them. Uh, from what they have to eat to what they have to wear, where they have to go. They like to make their own uh, decisions. Uh, they begin to develop um, a capacity uh, to think in much uh, broader um, uh, terms. Um, you know, they uh, they are also, you know, at this age, they are all, uh, have a better idea about how to think through abstract concepts, abstract difficult ideas, and they are able to connect things, they are able to visualize things, think out logically, uh, you know, bring in uh, 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 reasoning and understanding to even abstract uh, ideas and um, concepts. 
Um, so this begins to change uh, their thinking. Their thinking is, uh, you know, beginning to change, and it's 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 um, shown in different ways, uh, you know, in how they are acting, their how they're behaving, um, and also because they are expected to take much more responsibility for their own learning. Okay, the own decisions that they make, the choices that they make. Now their parents, their teachers are saying, "Hey, you made that choice. You're going to face the consequences." So they they're beginning to take that own responsibility. So uh, their capacity to think is uh, you know broadening uh, in 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 various issues in various ways. Uh, so it'll be good to help them because they are not there. They don't know to make the right choices. They don't know completely, but good to help them to uh, understand through uh, scripture and through various Bible narratives. Okay, we'll stop here and uh, continue in our next class. Anyone has any questions? Uh, this is the last age group, so, you know, um, we'll just finish this and then go on to the learning styles of children uh, and then looking at how we can write a lesson plan or build a curriculum for children's church. So anyone has any questions? No questions? OK, there are no questions. Then uh, we'll end class. Thank you all for joining class. And uh, I'll see you on Monday. Thank you very much. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you, Elisha.